This is a really interesting story about a point of tension between the Biden White House and some of their key allies in labor. So the Biden White House has started to feel out the idea of requiring that um, federal government employees and other sort of other businesses and federal workforce require them to be vaccinated. Big divide has emerged between some labor unions and that direction within the administration. Um, so you've got, you know, kind of one of the, the bigger players in this town, AFL-CIO President Richard Trumka. He said he would support a mandate that was seen as giving a boost to the White House efforts. So we put the tear sheet up on the screen. We can put the tear sheet up there. Um, yeah, so there's Richard Tum Trumka. You can see him there. So he says that he would support a mandate. He's been a key ally of Biden as he was with um, Obama. He also would go and talk to Trump and do all of that, mm -hmm. too. But— other labor leaders are much less comfortable. And um, there's so there's a split within labor. There's also a split between members and leadership. Rank and file. Especially. Rank and file. You've got a lot of conservative mm -hmm. members. You've got a lot of Trump-supporting members of these labor unions. And so those leaders and members in those unions that have a lot of potentially Republican membership are a lot less comfortable with all of this. Um, one noteworthy dissent on this is the International Association of Firefighters. They were, I don't know if you guys remember when Biden first launched his presidential campaign, yeah. he did it with the firefighters. They've been with him from the right. jump. Some of his strongest supporters and backers from the beginning. Well, the press secretary for the IAFF says directly, we're not doing any mandates. We're not advocating any mandates for vaccination. At this point, we want to make sure our members have what they need to stay safe on the job, and we are encouraging them to vaccinate and communicating with our local affiliates, but very strong in terms of, like, we're not down with this whatsoever. The, the analysis here, I thought this was interesting. It made a lot of sense to me. They say some unions say that because the vaccine has become so politicized, mandates from leadership would be less effective and would actually only alienate certain members. Instead, they push leadership to focus on incentives and outreach programs that have been effective in the past at getting rank and file members vaccinated. Several unions have already bargained with companies through the pandemic to provide certain perks to workers. For example, the Association of Flight Attendants led by Sarah Nelson, who you all know, um, they have not endorsed a vaccine mandate, but they negotiated a program that provides three extra vacation days to United Airlines flight attendants who receive the vaccine. There you go. One of the things that we've been talking about is like, you may feel like I, you know, I'm okay with getting vaccinated, but mm. I can't take the time off work. And then what if I get sick? And then do I have to miss that time too? So they cleared that obstacle for their workers and are, you know, doing what they think makes sense to get their members uh, vaccinated. And to me, that at this point, we may wish it was otherwise, but the vaccine is very politicized. And I think their analysis here is correct, I that a mandate is, is really counterproductive. I couldn't agree more. And at the end of the day, look, we live in a free country. And there's a lot of dicey legal ground here, too, because there's going to be challenges over exemptions. It is still emergency youth authorization. It's not fully you know, approved or whatever by the FDA, which means it actually can't legally be mandated. And whenever you look at a lot of this stuff and you think about the, the labor movement and more, do you really want to spark like this federal mandate that no. you have to do it and then create <laughs> more people leaving unions? I mean, that seems counterproductive in my opinion. We live in a free country. Having incentives, I think, is great. The city of New York just put in that program where they're going to offer anybody who walks into a vaccine clinic right now $100, no questions asked, if you get the I think that's awesome. That's exactly what you need to do. More vacation days, exactly. Having it so that the companies can give it on site. Once again, ease of access, incentive. That is exactly what people on the fence. And then you just have to live with the fact some people are not going to get it. We live in a free country, and that's how it is. And having this mandate, you know, I do think that it sends the wrong message because something I've been thinking about is you either have to go all in, kind of the way that France did, yeah. where they're like, look, you're not getting on a train unless you get vaccinated. You're not going to a restaurant. You're yeah. not getting on you're a not, train. They're like, you will not exist in society if you don't get vaccinated. That's what Israel did too. Yeah. But they're authoritarian countries. And I don't mean that in like a dictatorship way. What I mean it is that they don't have a bill of rights. Like we have freedom baked into our constitutional system and a federalist system in terms of all 50 states. National vaccine mandates are literally impossible in this country. And so otherwise, don't 
you know, it, creating this like red, blue, it, this will only culturally make it even worse and more of a hot button issue. And I think focusing on the incentives, emphasizing to workers about their own safety, about their ability to thrive, about maybe they'll get some perks and stuff, that's the best way to do it. So I, I really do feel bad for you know, many of the work and the union people who have to deal with this because they're like, Biden, you don't know what you're doing here, man. 40% of our people voted for Trump. Maybe one third of them won't get vaccinated. You're about to screw us out of our own power and ability to bargain for wages, which is ultimately what I think we should care about the most. Well, there has already been, you know, a long brewing sort of tension between, between some union leadership and rank and yeah. file because of this sense that their politics at right. the top are different from what um, not even a majority, but a large portion of rank and file members and what their political inclination is. So since there used to be a time and still at the state level, there are Republicans who are pro-labor, pro-union Republicans. And so labor unions would adore, endorse more like across the aisle. Mm -hmm. And so there was more of a clear demonstration of like, look, guys, this isn't about a partisan affiliation. This is just about the issues that are relevant to our membership and their economic material well-being. Well, with Republicans going all in on union busting for decades at this point, especially at the federal level, you're pretty hard pressed to find a single Republican that a union feels like we could endorse them and they're gonna do anything good for us. So that's created this tension already. I do think that a vaccine mandate Coming from Joe Biden and coming from union leadership, I do think that would be received really poorly. One place that I am not sure what I think about is I think it gets complicated when you talk about like healthcare workers, when yeah, you talk I about do. nurses. Yeah. I mean, if you if your job is to keep people safe and healthy, and that's that's your work that you've chosen, mm -hmm. and you are in hospital settings or nursing home settings or other institutional settings where you have a much more disproportionately vulnerable population, yeah. I feel a lot differently about like that. Like if you're an ICU nurse, yes. right? Yes, yeah, come on, I mean, get the freaking vaccine. I mean, yeah. this is this is your job, this is your livelihood, this is the, you know, what you've pledged to do and take care of people. So I do feel different in like those these certain yeah. narrow contexts, but in general, I think it's a, a violation of people's freedoms, and I frankly think that it's very counterproductive. I completely hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right, just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut, our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it, you get to ask us questions, all that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.